Now let's discuss how to control what we display in our viewport when it comes to particles and ice. So first things first, let's create ourselves a sphere. And with the sphere selected, we'll go ahead and we'll create particles with ice. Okay, so here's our particles. Let's close that. With this point cloud selected, simply go over here to the selection button on the MCP and you should see a particle display property down here. Either select it and hit enter to open up its PPG or click on the little gradient icon. Here we can see we have different types of uh, display as options that we can choose. I'll leave it on automatic so it inherits the, uh, the display type that's defined in the ice tree. We can also choose the uh, size and pixels that we'd like to see this. So right now it's set the points so if we set this to 20 pixels, these particles will appear to be 20 pixels wide. So I'll leave it back at 3. We can also set the display percentage. What happens is, let me go ahead and pin down this PPG by clicking that little keyhole icon. I'll select the particle cloud and open up a, uh, an ice tree view here. I'll double click the emit from surface compound to open up its PPG. And I'll change its rate to something crazy like 500,000. Okay, let me close that PPG, go back to the first frame of the animation and play this. And you notice we have a lot of particles. We have half a million particles a second being emitted here. So many that this thing is so dense we can barely even see through it unless we zoom in all the way. Okay, now naturally this is going to slow down your viewport and the speed of the simulation as you can see when I hit play. So... Maybe you only want to be able to see all the particles when you render, but you don't want to see all the particles while you're working in your viewport because it slows you down. The display percentage is great for that because right now it's set to 100%, which means we're going to see all the particles. But if we knock that down to 50%, go ahead and play this again, we'll only see half the particles. Well, half of 500,000 is still a lot. So let's set this down to like maybe 10% of the particles. So now we'll see... Uh, less particles in our scene, which is a little bit hard to note. So now let's set it down to 1%. And now you can see we see much less particles. So using that display percentage, you can actually uh, adjust and optimize the way that these particles are displayed in your viewport so you can work faster on your uh, ice particle simulations. So I'll set it back to 100%. And I'll go back and change that rate to something little bit more manageable. How about 1,000 as opposed to 500,000? There we go. Okay, we can do other things like show trails, show strands, and things like that. But another interesting thing that we can do here is apply a custom attribute. We can do that one of two ways. We can either click on this Add Display Attribute button, and if you didn't have that PPG open, I'll show you the second way of doing it. With the Particle Cloud selected, we can go over here to the Get menu, click on property and then go down here to attribute display when we click on that a new attribute display property is created for the particle cloud and this is great because it allows us to display custom attributes for example under here in attribute you'll notice that it's empty if we click on this arrow to open up the drop down box we can display different attributes like say color we can show the particle ID we can show the number of points as well as the scale, the point velocity, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and show the point velocity, so let's click on that. You'll notice that now we have these green lines that are connected to our each particle displayed in our viewport. What these green lines do, they show us vector trails, as we can see here, of the velocity of all the points in that particle cloud. So we can change the scale factor to control the size, the scale, of those trails. We can also set the display percentage not for the particles but for the trails themselves. So in case if our viewport is slowing down because there's too much going on we can lower that display percentage. We can also change the display as type from vector trails to point trails. We can also change to just points. We can also change to vectors which is just going to show us these solid lines with these arrows to show us the direction that these particles are being shot at. And we can also change different things. We can change to nulls, so we can see these different nulls on top of the uh, uh, object here that represent the velocity, and so on and so forth. I'll leave it on vector trails. That looks pretty nice. Okay, 
We can also apply our own custom labels. So for example, right now this box is empty. So I can say, type in say, um, I3D particles and hit enter. Now what happens is each particle will have this uh, label attached to it that says whatever I want it to say. In this case, I3D particles, or I can make it say, look at me, or look at him, whoever that is. Okay, we can also choose the direction or the location of those tags or those labels, so we can place them above particles, below particles, to the left of particles, or you guessed it, to the right of particles. So I'll leave it above. We can also change the offset and the X and Y directions of this. So we can move that to another location like so. And of course drop down the display percentage so we don't have so many of those labels on the screen at the same time. To get rid of that, all we have to do is simply delete whatever you have in the label field and hit enter. And there we go. No more labels. We can also change the color of these custom attributes. So if you don't like green, you can change it to red or a nice blue or whatever you really want. So these uh, custom attributes come in extremely useful. And again, you can change the attribute you want to see. For example, the number of points. So now this shows you the number of points in the particle cloud, which at frame 57, this particle cloud has 1,869 points. So you can see how this attribute display system can uh, be extremely useful for helping you to, to work with your particles and ice. Okay, so let's close that. If you don't want this uh, particle attribute uh, display anymore, you can go back to selection. And you notice down here is the attribute display that we created. You can actually just select it and hit the lead on the keyboard to get rid of it. Lastly, we can go up here to this uh, eye icon for the viewport and change our visibility options. You'll notice down here we have particles checked on. If we uh, uncheck that, you can turn particles off or you can check that back on to turn particles on. So if you're working on a huge scene with maybe some characters and things like that and there's also particles in the scene and stuff is starting to slow down because you have tons and tons of particles like 500,000, then you can come up here and you can turn the particles off. That way you don't slow your scene down and just turn them back on when you want to see them again. Okay, so that's particle display in exercise 7. Extremely important for controlling the way that you see particles and uh, the optimization of your interaction with your viewports in exercise 7. So I'll end this video here and in the next one we're going to start to get into how to render and change the color and the look of particles.